So I dropped Jess off to the airport this morning. She's gone back to Sydney for a week and has left me with the boat by myself for the first time. Spear fishing with Tim tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be east northeast till Jesse gets back, which should be nice. And we're going to dive probably Morton tomorrow. I just looked at the chlorophyll, it's crystal clear, like purple water almost. Sorry, Jess. But uh, that means I need to get from here, Coochie Mudlow, to Tangaluma. It's about 25 nautical miles. So if you want average out uh, about six knots, so it's going to be about four hours ish the water will be clear there so i should be able to run the water maker but i might just run into the shore now and uh bring my sneaky tap key and just fill up the jerry cans be solar sail. oh no kill cord hi i'm a captain try this again Okay, so I've set up the autopilot, got the water, turn all the instruments on. I'm just gonna double check the weather one last time. Wind is blowing east southeast, so it'll be like broad reaching the whole way. I'll just have the heady out on my on my own. Radio Morton Bay, this is sailing vessel for power. So there you go. just unreal first solo sail under my belt done beautifully here we are at Tangaluma hardly any other boats in sight the only other one is an easy same boat as our 300 mil bigger just awesome anchored in about five meters of water dropped the anchor went back on it dropped about 35 meters of chain Obviously it's slack tide now and there's no wind so we're just kind of just bobbing around right on top of it. I'm going to jump in, check my sinuses work because I'm going diving tomorrow. Check the anchor and the uh, thing I love about this boat so much is that there is a deck shower in the back so I can just shower there after my swim. But the beauty is it's 
gonna be a hot one. With the anchor secure, I went to say hello to my neighbors, Cheryl and Brendan, on their Easy 38 before calling it a night and getting ready for a massive day spearfishing with Tim early the next morning. Catching a few tasty crayfish, we decided to do some blue water hunting for Wahoo. I just lost a big one. I just lost a big one. I don't know what happened. I know exactly what happened. I should have dived at the last second to steady my shot from the oh, surface man. wave action. It was perfect, just what you said, stay on the surface, slowly kick, and he came like this. One peel, blocked the rod, went right under me, and I just drilled him. I thought it was perfect. He must have just kicked at the last second. I don't know. Big wahoo. I didn't see any. Just the one big one. I saw it twice. Yeah, right. We kept seeing big wahoo, but they just wouldn't play the game. We decided to change spots and chase reef fish again. As luck would have it, on my first dive, I noticed a big school of wahoo on the surface. It didn't take long for Tim to capitalize on the opportunity and land a nice shot on a 20 kilo wahoo. I jumped in with Tim for another drift and he starts yelling at me, tack a dive, tack a dive. And I didn't see what he I didn't see what he was yelling at, so I just instinctively just dived down. And as I dived, the wahoo that he was yelling about that was coming in actually went straight over my back. So I actually turned away and it was facing the wrong way. And this wahoo went over my back and uh, 
when I got down to the level of the flashes, I stuck my head up and there was this massive wahoo sitting in front of me. It was actually another one that came in. Things were about to get very interesting. He's smoking me. important to swim forward on your line as you retrieve it when fighting a fish like this to avoid a big pile up of line behind you. In all the chaos, my gun was actually run over by the boat snapping the GoPro from its mouth and actually cutting my reel in. Just watch that, that line trailing behind me. Tim jumped in the water to untangle my gun and actually retied my line as I was towed in the opposite direction. Tim, your GoPro! Tim! 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 Hi, Tim! I just couldn't get Tim's attention as my GoPro sank to the depths beneath him. It was even worse when I realised it was my GoPro. That, that was my GoPro. GoPro off the gun. I saw it sinking. I'm like, yeah, the GoPro! The GoPro! Yeah, I see it sinking. I'm like, the GoPro! The GoPro! Ah, oh, it's feeling. Just when we thought things couldn't get any more exciting, we noticed a pack of sharks in hot pursuit of the wahoo. I quickly signaled Tim to second shoot the fish. He dived down, lined up, and missed. To lose the fish to sharks after all of this would have been absolutely devastating. Tim quickly reloaded, dived back down and put a solid second shot into the fish. As I was pulling the fish up to me, I knew that it was going to be the biggest wahoo I'd ever landed. The relief was amazing. Cheers, Tim, bro. That other one was bigger. Was it? First one. Yeah, I didn't even see it. Cruising like this, I'm like, kick it. Right under me. That's that bronzy. Wahoo later pulled the scales down to 31.2 kilograms. I've been chasing a 30 kilo Wahoo for over 10 years and I was over the moon. With an esky full of amazing fish, we decided to head back to Papau and call it a day. Thanks for watching guys. If you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the second part of my solo adventure where I explore the rest of Tangaluma, go for my first spear in the new tender and land another personal best fish. 
I would like to give out a huge thank you to all our patrons for their ongoing support and would like to welcome aboard Alberto. And I heard Tim yell, Take a dive, take a dive. <laughs> yeah. You saw this massive one. <laughs> How old are you? Seriously. Say. <laughs> Let's get you it. Saw